We're going to go ahead and get into our, our next speaker. Um, Dr. Greg Williams is joining us from Hudson County, New Jersey. Um, he is also a member of the Center for Vector Biology at Rutgers University. Dr. Williams has been working on innovative and novel tools for the development of, of control measures against Aedes albopictus and other container inhabiting mosquitoes. And the UAV systems are certainly one of those potential tools. All right, thank you. So today I'm going to give you an overview of some of the systems that we've developed at the Rutgers Center for Vector Biology um, to to utilize drones for mosquito control. How this project get started? Back, uh, you, some of you may recognize this. It's the Parrot AR drone. It came out around 2010. It was the kind of the first commercially available drone. Um, and you flew it with your iPhone. And so Randy Gobbler at the center bought one, flew it around, probably crashed it into a tree and sent it back to Amazon. But it, it uh, caused him to ask the question, you know, could we attach a sprayer to this and actually kill some mosquitoes? And the answer was no. I mean, this isn't made to lift anything. It didn't even fly very well. But it got us thinking. So we started looking at other options. And back then, the only, you know, true, what I would call aut autonomous drones available to the public were in the hobby industry and they were do-it-yourself kits. And this was the first one that we built. We named it the Frankencopter. It was ugly, it was expensive, uh, it was difficult to build and difficult to fly. And in fact, when we showed it to our partners at the Department of Defense looking for some funding, they, they almost laughed at us. But it worked well enough to kind of um, make us realize that there was some potential here and that this was worth looking at a, a little further. Fast forward several years, our machines have advanced, the technology has advanced, and now we have probably about half a dozen different uh, autonomous uh, aerial vehicles that we use for mosquito control. This is uh, one of the first ones that we built. It's a hexacopter. It's custom built, so we selected all the parts individually. They're all available, readily available online, but we hand selected them to give, them, give us the traits that we wanted. It's a hexacopter, six motors, six props, battery powered, weighs about six kilograms, it's about 1.2 meters from prop tip to tip. At the time it cost us around $5,000 to build, it's probably half of that now, and uh, we get about 35 minutes of flight time out of it. And again, this has a flight control system that, enable, that uh, enables us to fly completely autonomously. We scaled up a little bit uh, and we started to look at more commercial options. This is the DJI S1000 Plus, it's an octocopter. More motors, more power, we can lift a heavier payload, hopefully fly a little bit longer. We've kind of hybridized this a little bit, so it's a DJI frame and motors, but we've put a different flight control system in it, the Pixhawk, which allows us a little more flexibility to program it to do the things that we want it to do. This one is about, it's about 1.5 meters from tip to tip, weighs about seven kilograms, costs around $3,700, uh, not including the batteries, and, um, and we'll be uh, doing our future work with this machine. We just uh, just finished building this. Oh, and this one, although it's larger than our hexacopter, it does fold, so it's much easier to transport. This is our aquacopter. It's uh, waterproof, it floats, it's about 550 millimeters from motor to motor, and has a live high-definition camera on, that uh, looks underneath the water and is able to show us anything that might be uh, swimming around in the water. This one costs around a thousand bucks to build. And this is one of the first fully off the shelf systems that we started looking at. This is the DJI Phantom 4. It's about 350 millimeters from motor to motor. It costs around $1,100, flies for 28 minutes. Um, it has a high definition camera on it, 4K video camera on it, and a still photo. Not really made to do anything other than take pictures and videos, but we've kind of hacked the system a little bit to, uh, to do some cool things I'll show you. Now, all these systems are flown with a standard RC remote control, and flying these machines is, you know, manually is somewhat difficult, it takes some training, it takes some experience, and so we've really focused on autonomous missions. So all, all these systems have some sort of uh, tablet or smartphone attached, and we can program autonomous missions, and these machines will take off, fly a predetermined route, turn the sprayers on and off, return, land, all by themselves. 
themselves, making it uh, much more available to, to the general user. And here's an example of mission uh, being planned in real time on my tablet. So you, what we're doing is I'm simply drawing uh, a square <laughs> around the area that we want to fly. The software will automatically build the flight paths for me, and then by adjusting the sliders on the side here, I can change the angle of the flight paths, the altitude of the mission, and the distance between the flight paths just by adjusting these sliders. Once I have a flight plan that I'm happy with, I can send this wirelessly instantly to the drone, hit go, and then the machine will take off, fly this route, return to home and land all by itself. So what is it exactly that we're trying to do with these things? Well, we want to be able to do all the things that we typically do in mosquito control. So we want to be able to do larval surveillance, find out where the mosquitoes are. We want to be able to do larval control, kill those mosquito larvae at the source, and also some adult control to kill the adult mosquitoes as well. And so we've developed custom modules to do accomplish all these tasks. So the most obvious thing that you can do with a drone is aerial surveillance. Just find the water. This is a photo taken by the Phantom 4. Uh, this is a, a Phragmites marsh. And for scale, this is a telephone pole here to give you an idea. So if you're standing on the road here, these Phragmites are about 10 to 12 feet tall. You can't see in here. You have no idea where the water is. You have no idea where your mosquitoes might be coming from. So simply by flying over, you can find the water and you have an idea of where you need to take action. And here's a real world example of where we use a drone to solve a mosquito problem that we could not have solved without it. This is Musha Key. It's a private resort island in the Bahamas owned by David Copperfield. If any of you want to stay there, it's a mere $54,000 a day with a four day minimum. So for $214,000, you not only get your own private island, but you get all the mosquitoes that come with it. They have a very bad mosquito problem. And one of the issues is these yellow paths, the foot paths, that's the only access that you really have to the island. All this green stuff is way too dense to get into. The island staff have no idea of what's beyond these footpaths, really. So we took our drone, we attached the camera, we flew it overhead, and if you look closely, all these light trees, these are silver buttonwoods and all that dark stuff under there, that's water. And if you look here, here's the footpath. So less than you know, 50 feet off the path, was this one acre wetland that the island staff had no idea even existed. When we went there and to ground truth it, we cut through the brush, this is what we found, this one acre wetland with a shallow pool going across the whole thing. And of course, when we checked the water, it was loaded with tens of thousands of larvae. And when we shook the brush, uh, hundreds of thousands of adult mosquitoes were coming off of here. And it just happened to be upwind of the worst spot on the beach where everyone was getting bitten. So when the breeze was right, all these mosquitoes would get blown on the beach and attack the people. Uh, so, here's the, so now they know where the problem is, they can address it and hopefully solve the mosquito problem. So we can find the water. Can we find the mosquitoes, the mosquito larvae? This is our aquacopter. We're flying from the tree line in the distance. We're flying out over a brackish water marsh. We'll change to a live view from the drone itself. And we're landing in a mosquito pool. And this is what the pilot can see. You can see all these uh, 80, uh, 80 solicitants larvae in the water. So doing surveillance on a marsh that maybe you can't walk on. I, I'm from Hudson County. All of our marshes are so silted over, you can't walk on them. You can't land on them with a full scale helicopter because of, of the Phragmites. But you can land a drone here and, uh, and see what's going on. So we can see the larvae, can we collect them? So this is our larval collector unit. The, you're gonna see this pump here lower down into the water. You have 12 vials here. The pump will uh, pump the water and the mosquito larvae into the vials. The excess water is draining out here. And once it's done, it's gonna to rotate to a new vial. So you have 12 vials, you can uh, fly off to the next spot, get 12 distinct samples of this machine. So we can find the larvae, we can collect the larvae. Now, of course, we want to kill the larvae. So this is a, uh, our aquatic spray system that we developed uh, attached to our hexacopter. It's based on a system de uh, developed by Wang et al. out of the Hoffman lab at the USDA. And we have a one liter spray tank, an electric pump, a microprocessor that allows us to connect this to the flight control system so it can automatically turn the system on and off as well as 
adjust the flow rate of the material based on the speed of the aircraft. And the material flows through these two booms on either side with um, standard T-Jet agricultural nozzles. And um, there's a wide variety of these available. The flow rate, droplet size, spray pattern can all be adjusted simply by swapping out these nozzles very quickly. So to test this out, we went uh, out to a marsh. This is uh, another brackish marsh. It's dotted with all these pockets of mosquitoes. So we went and we did dip counts to see how many mosquitoes were in here. And at each spot, we also set up some cups to collect droplets for uh, lab bioassays and some spray cars to collect the droplets and see what was coming out. And we programmed a mission to fly over the treatment plot and leave the control plot alone. And this is a video of that autonomous flight on the pilot. I'm also shooting the video because we don't have to fly. And here it is flying off low and slow, spraying uh, Vectorback 12AS, which is a BTI product, over the marsh. We'll speed it up at about eight times speed, and you can see it going back and forth over the over the marsh, working its way out. We did it's about an acre that we treated at a time here, and then we'll switch to a view from the drone itself. Same exact mission, and if you look closely at the nozzle here, you'll see the flight control system turning on when it gets into position. There it goes, and you'll see me over here shooting the video. Continued. You'd see me over on the side shooting the video and celebrating because we weren't having one of those you know, malfunctions that we just heard about. So the mission went really well. You could see the machine was doing exactly what we wanted, but unfortunately we didn't get really good mortality when we went back and checked the larvae. And if you look, this is Spartina Paytans Marsh. It's very, very healthy this that, that, that season, uh, probably the luscious that we've ever seen it. And it looked like the, um, if you look here, on, uh, hopefully you can make out these drops. These were the spray cards, and what these told us was we put out the right amount of material with the right size drops at the right rate. So everything went according to plan, but we still didn't get the mortality we were looking for, probably because all this liquid material just got caught up in that grass, didn't make it to the water. And in fact, I run a mosquito program. When I treat an area like this, we don't typically do it with liquid, we do it with a granular pesticide that's gonna penetrate through that vegetation. So we decided to develop a granular unit for our machine. Ran down to the home improvement store. This is just one of those hand seeders that you see. You kind of twist it and it shoots out the grass seed or fertilizer. Took a bunch of different mosquito control granules, put them in there just to make sure they would feed through. They did. So we had an electric motor to turn the crank, added a microprocessor to control the system, turn it on and off remotely with the flight control system, and we attached it to our drone. And here we are making an application over, um, over a drainage ditch along a railroad track. You can see the product coming out, nice distribution of granules on the surface of the water. And if you look closely, we switch views here, these are power lines. So you've got railroad tracks, you've got power lines. This is an urban area that would be very difficult to treat with a full-scale helicopter because of the obstructions, but with a drone, no problem. So granular products, we can distribute those. They work well, but they're, temp they're usually uh, temporary products. They last a few days at best. So in mosquito control, we also have uh, briquettes, tab uh, tab tablet products, where you have concentrated pesticide, usually in a clay matrix, so that it can release slowly over time. And we wanted to see if we could release these from the drone as well. So this is an exploded diagram of a unit that we developed. This is a natural R. XRT briquette, it's a large briquette, about uh, five inches long, works for about 180 days, and th this carousel here holds eight of them. Every time the carousel rotates, it'll drop one out. The whole thing was 3D printed in-house uh, on our own 3D printer. Here's the base of the unit actually still on the printer. And to test this, you know, we didn't want to test the efficacy of the product. We know the product works. We wanted to see how accurate our machine could be dropping these briquettes autonomously. So we went out to an open field, set up this grid with four sites, it's 50 by 100 meters, and we set a program for our machine to go out, pause at a site, drop a briquette, fly to the next one, pause, drop, so on and so forth, all based on GPS locations. And we repeated this uh, flight three times. 
And here's a video of one of those drops. The red, there's the unit right there. And if you look closely, you'll see the briquette drop out and it's flying off to the next site. Again, completely autonomous mission. And this graphic illustrates the, the results of those tests. This yellow hexagon was, is our target. This is where we wanted to drop. The different colors are the four different sites that we we're dropping at. The different shapes are the three different replicates. And on average, we ended up getting about 1.1 meters from our target. Now, standard GPS accuracy is said to be somewhere around two to six meters. So we're actually pretty happy with these results. This isn't bad. But Randy Goldworth, the Center for Vector Bio Biology, being who he is, says, well, can we do better? You know, can we do better with a manual flight? You know, can we hit a bucket? And so here I am with the remote control and a pair of FPV goggles with a first person view underneath the drone. Here's our drone. We placed four buckets out in the field and then I try to drop the briquettes in the bucket manually, and there you go, right down the middle. Now, they didn't all go that well, but <laughs> even when we missed, we only missed by a couple inches. So with, uh, with some practice, you know, hitting a 12-inch target is certainly possible with a manual flight. Those are big briquettes. It's a big unit, requires a big machine to carry it around, not necessarily something you might want in an urban environment, so we decided to shrink it down. This is the same product, Natural-R, which is... Um, Spinoza. These are natural RT30 tablets. They're a 30-day tablet. They're about you know an inch across. This is the exploded diagram of the unit we developed for that. It can hold 15 in this tube, but we can change that tube to be any size we want and stack these things up, you know, 20, 30 high. It was developed for the DJI Phantom 4. Again, not a machine that's meant to do anything, but we're able to hack the system a little bit to get it to operate this machine. And here it is printed out, attached, and ready to go. And here's a real world example. This is a sewage treatment facility in my district. It's closed, it's fenced off, we have no access to it. So we took our drone, we're flying from the outside, flying up over the facility. Now we'll switch to a view from the drone itself. This is what the pilot actually sees, nice high definition image. And we're flying in, and here's all the water that sits, rainwater, mosquitoes, and if you look down here, you'll see one of those tablets dropping out. There goes one. This is one of the rare examples of where we actually have a manual flight. This machine is so stable and so reliable that manual flight is almost easier than autonomous flight. And here goes another one you'll see dropping out. And so on. We can treat this entire facility completely uh, remotely like this. So we can find water, we can find larvae, we can collect the larvae, we can kill the larvae, can we kill the adult mosquitoes? This is a ULV or ultra low volume unit that we put together. It's based on a rotary, electric rotary atomizer. We've got a small couple ounces of mosquito adult side, usually a pyrethroid product. And this nozzle, this head spins around at high speed and throws off the product, makes about 23 micron drops. And here's a video of it in action. You can see the spray coming off the nozzle there. And so to test this out, we went out in the field, we set up a three by three trial, and in each one of these plots, we have a cage of Aedes albopictus mosquitoes and some spinning rods to collect the drops to see where the product ends up and, and how much is there. And then what we did when we do adult side missions in mosquito control, often they're done from the ground by truck. So we're driving at around you know five kilometers an hour with the spray head about eight to 10 feet off the ground, slowly down the street, and then the prevailing wind will take the product and drift it to the target area because we're, we're uh, restricted to driving on the roads. And so that's what we tried to mimic with the drone. And we didn't get very good results. We got some mortality in this first set of cages uh, downwind, but that was about it. So why was that? Well, we took a couple smoke bombs, attached them to the machine, and what you can see is that everything's getting caught in the uh, downdraft of the props. And so what we ended up doing basically was spraying the vegetation on the ground, not getting that product in the air where it was drifting to the cages. But if we fly a little higher and a little faster, you can see the product stays, stays suspended better, it gets into the air and it will it should distribute a little better so we're going to repeat this test 
this time flying directly over the target area rather than upwind of it. And in fact, that's an advantage because with a truck, again, you're limited to the streets, you're relying on the prevailing wind to carry it to the target area. With a drone, you can take your product directly to the target, uh, means you need less product and less non-target impacts. Now I run a mosquito program, so when I go out to treat a marsh, you know, this is the typical type of aircraft that I contract. It's a full-scale Bell Jet Ranger, carries about uh, I think 800 pounds of product. And so when I think drone, you know, I think big. You know, and this is what I want to build. You know, get, get rid of this guy and replace him with 200 pounds of pesticides and let's see what we can kill. But the truth of the matter is, you know, drones aren't quite there yet. They're not at a place where they can replace full-scale aircraft. So rather than trying to force them into a niche where they're not really quite ready, what if we take advantages, to, what if we maximize the advantages of drones? What if we focus on small and we build them smaller? And in fact, if you look at recent disease trends, chikungunya, dengue, zika, these aren't problems of you know, open marsh habitat. These are urban problems uh, from 80s mosquitoes that are occurring in containers in people's backyards, not from these wide open marshes. So in an urban environment, smaller is probably better. So we started, I just threw this together last week. This is just a prototype. This is my personal racing drone. This is not what we would uh, you know, use as the final device, but we developed a couple micro modules for it to test out the concept. Here's a small granular applicator. Here's a quarter for scale. And this doesn't look like much product, but for something like spinosad, to treat a container takes about 30 milligrams of product, so you've got enough in here to treat dozens of containers. And on the opposite side, we have a larval collector, just a single tube this time, but uh, a pump and a tube, and we can collect mosquito larvae with that. So just to kind of demo, here we are. If you look closely, you can see the mosquitoes getting sucked up into this pump, into this tube. The excess water is draining out. We retain just enough water to keep the mosquitoes alive. And there you can see the mosquitoes, they made it through the pump just fine. They're floating there in the, in the tube, ready to be brought back to the, to the pilot. And here's our granular applicator. And you'll see that little bit of product right there is enough to treat you know, about a bucket of, uh, bucket of water and enough material to, for dozens of containers there. So this is kind of the direction that we want to head, bring, make things smaller, less risk, less cost, and better for an urban setting. So what's the future for our project? Uh, one, we want to look more at commercially available units. We used to build all of our own drones, and you know, we're, we're fairly good at it, but even our engineering department at Rutgers University can't compete with billion dollar drone companies. You know, they are just way ahead of us, and sometimes working with machines off the shelf, it's, it's less expensive and you know, maybe a little bit more reliable because they've, uh, they've been tested much, much more than our stuff has. Two, we want to focus on smaller and urban environments. And we may not be at the point where you know, drones can replace, or one drone can replace full-scale aircraft just yet. But this is a video of 100 Intel drones flying in perfect formation. You might have seen this. We can't replace one full-scale you know, full aircraft with one drone just yet, but imagine 100 small drones each with a small payload of pesticide using swarm technology to fly in formation over an urban environment and like bees to flowers, finding those sources of water and dropping a little bit of pesticide in each one of those containers to combat things like Zika and Chikungunya and Dengue uh, for the, with these 80s mosquitoes. That's, that's kind of our vision. When, when I started this project, I thought maybe by the end of my career, a couple of the more advanced mosquito programs would be using drones to do something. Uh, we're already there. I get about uh, a phone call or two a month from a mosquito control program looking for advice on how to incorporate drones into their workflow. So by the end of my career, who knows, this might be possible. We may have these swarms of drones out, you know, taking care of the parts that we really can't get to, the, you know, everyone's backyard. I would just like to acknowledge a few folks involved with in the project, Isagunmu, Scott Kranz, Debbie Suman, and Yi Wong, all for assisting with uh, the development and uh, bioassays and field trials and all the other hard work that went into this.
this project. Thank you.